Hello there. Welcome to the Just the Discs channel. I'm Brian. Normally we talk about Blu-rays and Blu-rays only here and uh, today we're going to do something slightly different but we're still sort of talking about Blu-rays. These are some of my most wanted films that are not on Blu-ray that I would love to see upgraded to Blu-ray. So I've got a nice little stack of DVDs. All of these happen to be on DVD and have never made the jump that I'm aware of to Blu-ray. So let me get started. My shirt is kind of a little clue. Uh, my first choice is a little movie called Over the Edge from 1979, a real story of teenage rebellion. So this movie is one of my favorite 70s films and really becoming one of my favorite films of all time and um, it's all about this planned community called New Granada Tomorrow City Today I think it's based on a real town the commentary on here with um, uh, director Jonathan Kaplan screenwriters Charlie Haas and Tim Hunter and producer George Leto they talk about, oh, and by the way, Tim Hunter directed River's Edge, another one of my favorites that thankfully is on Blu-ray. Um, anyway, so uh, they talk about how there was some kind of article or there was some uh, real story about a town that you know went through all these hoops to sort of make it this wonderful planned community for adults, but they didn't take into consideration that they didn't really allow for much of an outlet for the youth of this community and thus things got a little crazy in that town as they do in New Granada uh, basically you got a bunch of kids running around doing drugs um, beating each other up shooting police cars with BB guns um, you know getting in trouble with the cops the only thing this town has is a small rec center that becomes a social hub but really that's mostly where they just hang out and get high and sell drugs um, so it's got a really remarkable cast you've got Matt Dillon there in I think his first movie and then uh, Vincent Spano and a kid named Michael Kramer Pamela Ludwig and um, there's some other really good kids in this but basically it just sort of follows them around and there's a certain authenticity to these kids and how they behave with each other and uh, it's just there's something about that portrayal that I've always found really interesting you know it just it's got a certain empathy to it it's not your average punks that you see in a lot of these 70s and 80s movies where they're very much unsympathetic this movie is definitely on the side of the kids and you know it, it really has an emotional wallop to it and it builds to a very powerful conclusion, let's say. And um, yeah, I just I really like this movie a lot. Uh, Michael Kramer is just really great as this lead kid. It's got a great soundtrack with the Ramones, Cheap Trick, Van Halen, and the Cars. It's just one of those soundtracks that uh, has always stood out to me as uh, one of my favorites. And that just elevates everything. Um, anyway, uh, I love Over the Edge. One of my absolute favorite films, and I really hope it gets a nice Blu-ray. It could be a Criterion Blu-ray. That's the quality of film we're talking about here. Uh, really good stuff. Over the Edge. Next up, we have something called Payday with Rip Torn. This is the story of, well, 36 hours in the life of a madman, according to the cover. Uh, but Rip Torn plays a country western singer named Maury Dan who seems to have missed his window to really make it big. And so he is now, um, you know, sort of, you know, touring and, you know, playing different smaller venues and uh, is, seems a little embittered about where he is. And so we spend about a day and a half with him and we see him, you know, play a bar and try to pick up women from the show afterwards and talk to his manager about not wanting to go on the Johnny Cash show because 
I don't know, he's got some beef with Johnny Cash. I can't remember. Uh, and then he sees radio DJs, uh, local DJs that are harassing him and trying to get him to do a personal appearance. And, you know, Maury Dan is not a particularly nice guy. And the movie makes no bones about that. And it's a really fantastic performance from Rip Torn. If you're used to seeing him as a comedic type, which he's really good at, uh, you know, Larry Sanders show, Defend Your Life. I love that Rip Torn, but this Rip Torn will blow you away because it's probably his best performance or you know, easily in the top two or three. Um, but yeah, I saw this as a double feature with Cisco Pike. I want to say circa 2000 at the local, uh, Cinematheque in Los Angeles at the Egyptian. And I had seen neither film and both instantly became two of my favorites. And Cisco Pike got a Blu-ray from Indicator, but Payday doesn't have one yet. And I really want a Blu-ray for this film. This is from director Daryl Duke, who also did a little movie called The Silent Partner. And those two movies alone will make you a fan of Daryl Duke. So that is Payday. Next up, we have one called Carney from 1980. This is kind of a sleeper type movie. You know, the kind of movie that just came out when it came out and didn't really connect with an audience, but slowly found something of a cult over time. Uh, in part because it's got a great trio of actors headlining. You have Gary Busey there in the clown makeup, Robbie Robertson from the band, and of course you have Jodie Foster. And it's a story about a carnival and two guys that have worked in the carnival, carnival for a long time. Uh, Busey plays you know, this clown guy who sits in the dunk tank antagonizing people, trying to get them to throw baseballs and, and drop him in the drink. And Robbie Robertson kind of oversees things and he's sort of buddies with him and they have been living this life for a long time. And what happens is one night, uh, Jodie Foster shows up uh, with a date um, and uh, it just is a thing where she's not really into the guy she's with and Gary Busey sort of connects with her and Gary Busey's character is very good with people. He has a trick that he does probably with the ladies a lot where you can look in them, well, sort of look them in the eyes and figure out how old they are. And so that becomes sort of his come on. But he also is just very charismatic and, you know, is sort of sympathetic to where she's coming from. She's a waitress in this small town looking to get out and they sort of have a spark. And so when she realizes that she's kind of done with this town, she sees this as an opportunity to leave and she ends up hitting the road with the carnival and that causes problems because it kind of creates a wedge between Robbie Robertson and the Gary Busey characters and her presence at the carnival causes issues because she doesn't really know what she's doing and there are some instances where people get a lot of control and I mean it's a creepy dark movie in some ways in terms of the seediness of carnivals and what goes on and I don't know. I like that stuff, though. It reminds me a little bit of like Nightmare Alley or something like that. Actually, it'd be an interesting double with Nightmare Alley. Um, but it's a really well done film. And uh, I, I want a Warner Archive Blu-ray or something for this one because it's just one that deserves it. All right. Next, we have The Heartbreak Kid. This from director Elaine May, one of my favorite directors. She also did a little movie called A New Leaf to have up there on um, Blu-ray. But this one has been hung up for whatever reason uh, and never come out. I think that A New Leaf and The Heartbreak Kid are two of the great dark, dark comedies of the 1970s. And Charles Grodin is incredible in this movie, as are Sybil Shepard, Eddie Albert, and Jeannie Berlin, who is actually the daughter of Elaine May. Basically, the story here is that uh, Grodin meets Jeannie Berlin in New York. He's a, a sports equipment salesman or something. And they hit it off and really uh, go to town quickly in terms of their relationship. They get married very fast before they've ever had sex. And then they take their uh, honeymoon down to Florida and Miami Beach. And along the way, on the trip down... Grodin starts to realize that maybe he's made a mistake. And this movie has some of the most awkward scenes in terms of 
things going badly, but they're also very funny in a way that I think few actors outside of Charles Grodin could pull off. And he just does a great job with it. So, yeah, it's dark stuff. He starts to basically um, realize he's made a mistake, and then he meets Sybil Shepherd, who's also on vacation with her parents in Florida, and he has to find a way in his mind to extricate himself from his new marriage. And that, of course, makes a very bad impression on your prospective new uh, girlfriend and her parents. Uh, again, Eddie Albert is in the movie. He plays her her dad, Sybil Shepherd's dad, and he's incredible. Um, and it has sort of a you know an unsettling, ambiguous kind of ending that I think is really one of the reasons it stands out. It's uh, written by Neil Simon, based on a story by Bruce J. Friedman, and so it has a little bit of that uh, Neil Simon style comedy, but it's darker, I think, than anything he ever did. And so it's just really effective stuff but incredibly funny in parts, even when you're cringing. So I love this movie. I really want a Blu-ray of the Heartbreak, Heartbreak Kid. Okay, now we're going to get silly. This is a <laughs> nostalgia pick for me, uh, Midnight Madness from 1980 from Buena Vista, the division of Disney that uh, allowed them to do some more adult stuff, um, like Watcher in the Woods and things like that. Um, it is one of the first PG-rated films they put out. Uh, I think the Black Hole preceded it, but it's in the top, you know, early two or three. And uh, it's very much kind of trying to emulate an uh, animal, animal House-style college comedy. As you can see from the, pic the poster here, they definitely wanted to do everything they could to say, hey... If you liked Animal House, you might like this movie. And basically the story is that a um, nerdy, genius-type dude on a college campus has figured out this game he wants to put on called The Great All-Nighter. And it's a game wherein there are teams, and each team gets a clue and follows a clue to a location, which gives another clue to another location until you get to a finish line. And... It's not the kind of thing you would think people would play. I mean, I would, but the folks that he targets as his potential teams don't seem interested at the beginning, but he's sort of calculated that they have enough animosity between them. The nerds, led by Eddie Deason, and the jocks, and the sorority girls, and whatever David Naughton's team is, and that's David Naughton's little brother, played by Michael Fox before he was Michael J. Fox. Um, so all these teams end up together and, you know, running around Los Angeles trying to win this game. And it sounds kind of silly, and it is, but it's also kind of fun, and I can't even objectively judge it anymore because I've seen it so many times. Uh, I didn't even see it on cable. Uh, it was one that ran on probably HBO and some other cable channels over and over and over, and I think, you know, people saw it then, and it became sort of a cult item. I rediscovered it in the 90s on VHS. Uh, actually, this VHS. Um, and it sort of reignited my love for the movie. But I do want a Blu-ray of it, and I will say I don't want it to be a Disney Movie Club Blu-ray. I won't get too deep into my feelings about the Disney Movie Club line, but my experience with those discs is that they are pretty weak in terms of the time and care taken. And even in cases where Disney's done a special edition DVD, they don't tend to port over the special features. It just seems all very haphazard to me. I have a few of them, but I don't recommend uh, you know, going for the Disney Movie Club discs for the most part. Just my own take. Um, so I want a Blu-ray from somebody else. Uh, you can stream this movie on Vudu and Amazon in widescreen and HD, so I would say do that now. But uh, I'd love to get a nice Blu-ray from somebody else, like Arrow Video would do a killer Midnight Madness Blu-ray. That would be amazing. Um, anyway, so nice, I bought it twice. I want Midnight Madness on Blu-ray. Next up, I've got a documentary, American Movie, with the great Mark Borchardt. Uh, 
you know, it chronicles him trying to make his movie Coven and having some problems doing so. And therein lies both comedy, drama, and inspiration. I find him to be an incredibly inspiring character, a uh, real person. And uh, this is one of my favorite documentaries. This is one I think uh, Criterion could do. And, you know, it would fit right in with something like Crumb and some of the other documentaries. You know, I put this on a level with F for Fake, you know, but maybe some others wouldn't. Um, but uh, really great documentary. And like I said, inspiring and in a year where I feel like we need inspiration people should be able to watch American Movie on Blu-ray uh, right now so I do hope somebody does it at some point great documentary now this next one this DVD was a long time coming this is Lunatics a Love Story from 1990 and uh, so I'm not trying to look a gift horse in the mouth I appreciate that Umbrella the uh, company from Australia who's done some really nice Blu-ray releases uh, put out this DVD so I'm assuming maybe it's difficult to do a Blu-ray maybe the elements are such that you can't I don't know uh, but this one was not available on DVD at all until last year I want to say um, but it's definitely a cult item it's the story of an agoraphobic Ted Raimi this guy who's having sort of a mental breakdown where he's having these hallucinations of a doctor played by Bruce Campbell who's trying to stick him with a giant needle and uh, there's spiders and stuff. Ted Raimi um, gets lonely and tries to call a, you know, uh, escort. Not a, no, it's more like a sex line or something. Talk to a woman line. And he misdials a number and he ends up hitting a phone booth that happens to have Deborah Foreman in it, who has been thrown out by another Bruce Campbell character, her ex-boyfriend, who... Uh, left her holding the bag on some rent and she got herself in trouble with some gang members. So she's stuck in this phone booth. She answers the call. Ted Raimi thinks she works for whatever line he's called. And she's desperate to find a place to go. So she asks if she can come over. So she does. And she sees Ted's apartment. The walls are covered in foil. Ted is acting weird. And it's the farthest thing from a meet cute that you would think would work, but it really does. And, uh, so they kind of start to hit it off, but it's definitely a quirky, strange movie and a dark movie. Uh, but I really love it, and I would love a Blu-ray of it. Umbrella, maybe, whoever. Uh, but I'll, I'll sit on this DVD for a while. I'm happy to have this. So, uh, Lunatics and They're in Love. Uh, really good stuff. Just a few more here. Night Shift. Ron Howard's movie Night Shift, uh, probably still one of my favorite Ron Howard movies to date, uh, and that is in, due in no small part to a great performance by Henry Winkler, who plays sort of a nevish, put-upon uh, dude who works at the morgue, uh, who's dating this uptight woman, or he's engaged to her, and at the beginning of the film, he's shoved onto the night shift because his boss's son-in-law wants a job, and it's just basically one of those arcs where you see a character that's always taking guff from people and you're like how long is he going to do this and what's going to happen and he's joined by an incredible Michael Keaton in that wonderful time when he had and he still does to a degree but he doesn't do it anymore as much that amazing kinetic uh, almost I don't know ADHD crazy Michael Keaton comedic vibe and he plays the other guy that works on the night shift and they become entangled with some prostitutes and running a prostitution ring out of the morgue and it goes from there and it's very funny it's raunchy it still plays really well i watched it recently on hbo now uh in hd and widescreen so it's streaming there if you want to see it and i'm hoping that might be an indication that Maybe there's a Blu-ray in the works. This could easily be a Warner Archive Blu-ray. I would love that to happen. Even if it means there's no extras, I just want to have this movie on Blu-ray. Just a really fun early 80s comedy. Uh, goes well with After Hours, which is another one that I would say deserves a Blu-ray, but we know hopefully it's coming from Criterion at some point. But that's also on HBO now, by the way, or, or it was. Uh, so you can watch Night Shift and After Hours together. And they are both a hoot. But that early Michael Jake sorry, Michael Keaton, energy is really something special. And um, 
Shelley Long is fantastic in this movie too. Really, really enjoyable and I feel like starting to be forgotten and I hope that's not the case because it's a lot of fun. Class it up really quick with a criterion here. This is Blast of Silence from 1961. I was turned on to this one by Joe Dante. If you look up Joe Dante on Blast of Silence, you can see that he does a trailer from hell on this movie and he really likes it. Um, it is directed and written and starring a guy named Alan Barron. That's him. He looks a little bit like a young George C. Scott, but not as much character. Uh, and he plays a hitman who comes from Cleveland to New York to do a job, kill a local um, low-level mobster, and there are complications. I'm not going to go into that, but it's a fun... No, I mean, that's not right. I mean, it's fun in that it's a good noir and it satisfies, uh, but it's a dark, gritty, you know, low-budget movie. Apparently, it was picked up by Universal International, which... Joe Dante himself is baffled by because it's like a $20,000 movie that somehow got picked up by, by a major distributor. Um, but it's still not very well known. And as far as I know, there's no Blu-ray. I would certainly love to see a Criterion upgrade, but uh, I'll take anything. It's just a really solid noir. Look for this one to watch in November if you're doing a noir vember kind of thing. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, I like this a lot. And lastly... Another one that I'm hoping is a cheat because maybe it's coming, but it was hinted at by Indicator, I want to say, two years ago now. They posted a picture of it towards the end of maybe 2018. I don't remember. And I was like, yes, it's coming. And then it didn't happen. Um, and it still hasn't happened. And there hasn't been any news about it. So I don't think it's happening in 2020. But recently, a, I guess, proper version of it surfaced on Amazon Prime. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. I can't remember if it was cut or if there was some rescoring of the soundtrack. I don't know what happened, but this new version on Prime is supposedly a very good version, and I'm hoping that means that maybe there's a Blu-ray not too far off because this is one of my favorite films, period, and then my favorites of the 70s, my favorite Altmans. It's it's way up there, and it's due in small, no small part to George Siegel and Elliot Gould. They have fantastic chemistry together, and they play two, like, you know, loser gamblers that kind of encounter each other and become friends. And George Siegel's kind of going through a midlife crisis. And, you know, it's it's kind of dark in parts, but it's also funny in parts. And the chemistry, as I said, that they have is bar none some of the best of this period. And uh, it's just a fantastic movie. Really something special. Uh, go watch it on Prime. If you want to check it out while we're waiting for a Blu-ray, but um, I really do hope one comes because uh, I mean this has a commentary. That's one of the reasons I haven't gotten rid of it. Uh, it would definitely be a potential Criterion release. I mean, it really could go Criterion. I mean, Indicator recently announced Buffalo Bill and the Indians, so you've got another Altman film. Uh, that unfortunately I think that's MGM. This is Columbia, Sony, so maybe they Twain will never meet and we won't see an indicator Blu-ray, but I'll take whatever. Anybody that wants to put this out, please do so, because it's one of the best films of the seventies, and I hope it gets that uh loving care at some point because it deserves it. But that's it for my uh most wanted on Blu-rays part one. I mean I'm clearly gonna do more of these. Uh hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please leave me some comments below about films that you want to see on Blu-ray that haven't come out yet. I'd love to see what uh, you're missing. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.